Hello, all the Interest TV viewers and listeners. Rovio published its Q4 results today, and here with me is Rovio CEO, Alex Pelletier Normand. Welcome, Alex. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Let's let's start with the easy question first. So could you get, tell us the highlights of your Q4 results? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Q4 was um, actually the first quarter of growth in the in the U.S. after you know five consecutive quarter of decline. Um, so the U.S. the U.S. Uh, market grew two percent uh, year uh, quarter on quarter, and sequentially we uh, we grew five point four percent. So it was nice to see the market kind of like shifting because after several quarters of of decline like this, it, it's good to see it to see that the momentum is changing. But of course, as a whole, when we look at the year twenty twenty two, it was the first year of decline right of the industry since since the beginning right since ever. So uh, so those signs are encouraging. Uh, for us, the main highlight of the quarter was obviously Angry Birds Dream Blast, you know, grew by 33% uh, year on year and continues to grow. So that's that's definitely uh, great and, and encouraging. Uh, so overall, overall, I would say that we're very happy that we managed to outperform the market during the year. But of course, you know, those are those are not the uh, growth numbers that are uh, at, you know, our ambition level. Yeah. If you look at the Q4 profitability, what was behind the decrease compared to last year? Yeah, mainly, you know, like in, in our industry, when we uh, when we do those UA investments, because we're scaling a game like we did for Angry Birds Streamlast, uh, it does have a short term impact on profitability. But that's usually good news, right? It means that we can scale it and we have this payback model that we follow that and we're very rigorous following it right so we know that this money is going to come back but in the short term it does have an impact right so that was one of the main reasons yeah yeah let's then talk a little bit more about the angry bird stream blast you have been like scaling up the team for like a couple of quarters now and we can see see those growth numbers that the strategy is working so are you planning to increase also your other top games team team sizes now that's definitely the plan, right? And when we when we talk about those games, we're obviously we're talking about the three main games for us. So Angry Birds 2, Angry Birds Stream Blast, and Angry Birds uh, Friends as well. Uh, so, you know, we have several learnings from uh, Angry Birds Stream Blast. You know, this game uh, improved, you know, it was not one thing. There were, were so many things that we did in this game that uh, contributed to this. And, uh, you know, it improved months over month for several months, right? So we improved the uh, the events that we have in the game. We, uh, we you know, the, the goal is always to keep the, the game super lively, super, you know, active so that each time someone connects, there's something new happening in the game. And um, so, you know, we did this. It... Uh, um, uh, allowed us as well to have, you know, some featuring. Uh, the platforms were very happy that, that you know, we were doing those things and that the game was performing better and better. We had some partnerships with the, increase the DAU as well. And that's one aspect, right? But of course, we improve our efficient, efficiently efficiency doing UA as well. We started the year with using three channels to advertise the game. And at the end of the year, we had 22 channels, right? So um, definitely double down on on the efficiency of UA on the creatives as well that we uh, use to to market the game. And you know when you do all of this together, then you man you manage to scale the game, right? And and that's where that's where you see the result that we saw. So all of those learnings are things that uh, you know are very precious because now we we're sitting down with our other teams and and you know trying to figure out how to adapt those things to their to their project as well. So definitely you know exciting. Yeah, and you have also lots of new games in your development pipeline. So can you share any news from that front? Yeah, so this quarter, when I when I think about it, it's going to be a lot about those market tests, right? Market tests are so important for us in our industry, and we do them, you know, as as early as ever now. Uh, but so we have games that are further down the development pipeline. So Moomin is going to have its long term retention test done in the quarter in Japan. Uh, so this ge- this game is coming along. So that's that's uh, that's you know that's exciting. Bad Piggies too. I need to talk about it because you know I receive mails every day about this game. The fans are uh, you know talking about this quite a lot. 
Um, so, you know, we're entering into the, we're getting close at least to, to launch it in, in, in soft launch as well. So we're looking forward to have some market data on this game. But there's also quite an interesting game coming from Ruby Games, our studio in Turkey that we acquired uh, that uh, focus now on those hybrid casual games. We have one game that's called Wizard Hero that is in soft launch right now and, and showing good results. So uh, definitely many things uh, coming. So uh, we'll have to see, you know, what's happening in the quarter and how, what what uh, what's the result of those uh, those market tests. Yeah, and um, of course now the recent news that about the Play Tika's takeover offer of Royal has been like a big big news around your company. So can you give us any comment on that that subject or any any of your own thoughts about that? At this point, well, you know, you know, this is a tricky topic, right? We can't really talk about this, uh, unfortunately. This week, uh, we announced that uh, the board is conducting a strategic review and preliminary discussions uh, with uh, different parties, including Platica. But really, at this point, you know, uh, that's that's as much as we can share. And uh, you know, we'll come back to discuss about this once uh, once things uh, unfold. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand. Maybe last last question about your this year's outlook and focus areas. What how how is the year 2023 looking for Rovio? Yeah, so so this year is really going to be a year where we focus on our three big live games, right? Because as I said, you know, we we still feel that uh, there's so much we can do with those games and exploring new geographies, for instance, and building on the learning of Dream Blast. Uh, so, you know, definitely still a lot to do on that front. Uh, and so we're going to grow those teams. So that's, uh, we're going to increase our investments on, on those teams. And then you, as you saw for Dream Blast, it is paying off to do this. You mentioned as well our new game. So, of course, that's something that we continue to have a look at. But when I think about this, you know, it's really important. I was talking earlier about those market tests. So it's really important that we focus our efforts and our investments. So that's why we're doing those tests, right? We really want our resources to be on those games that can make a difference. And, you know, the idea is not to not to lose to lose focus, right? Not to be all over the place. We really want to concentrate. Um, and then, you know, of course, we continue uh, looking at m as So for us uh, this year, what's going to what it's what it's going to mean is that we're going to look at companies that have a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, uh, traction. And what I mean by this is that we're not necessarily looking at companies that are, you know, don't have a game on the market yet. You know, even if they're veterans, we're looking at uh, at companies that already have revenues and track records. And the other thing that we're looking at is uh, companies, for instance, that could have an interesting IP that is emerging, right? Because we can, we know how to build IP, how to, uh, you know, to develop IPs like we did with Angry Birds. So that's really something, this could be the type of company where we can really add something, right? And build value. So that's another uh, point of focus for us. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting year in many ways. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Alex, for this interview. Thank you very much.